Let me do some quick sharing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Alrighty then. Welcome to episode four of Tab Three to Counter. I'm Chris. I'm Josh. I love how we do that at the beginning every time, and it's always so fucking awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, we're uh, actually missing Hector this time because he's too busy succeeding with college and stuff right now. So um, we will sadly be without him, but the show must go on. So we can, uh, I guess, just go ahead and jump in. And uh, today's topic is going to be deck building part one. So do you want to go ahead and throw some information at him? So, uh, deck building part one, we normally start with an outline, uh, very basic. We're looking for, um, you know, uh, uh, depending, obviously, uh, depending on the deck, the style of play, what's going to happen inside the deck, you're going to adjust these numbers on what you want to focus on. That's really what you want to do with the deck. It's always about what you want. Um, but we like to have a general outline, a general idea of the basic numbers that we're going to look at. And we're looking at uh, destruction for removal. Um, draw. My favorite. <laughs> yeah. Your favorite. Draw. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, ramp, which I, another one of your favorites, yeah, actually. I do. I do like bringing stuff early. I like to come early. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> I mean, no, I don't do that. What? Turn, turn two. Turn two, two. We're busted. Turn two? Sorry, turn two. <laughs> turn two, and I have a soul ring. If you know what I mean. Uh, oh, turn one. Wow, well, this got yeah, this got away from us. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, uh, having those basics in there, um, obviously you're gonna have your land, and then we move on to unique. So, <clears throat> removal. Uh, draw and ramp. We aim for roughly about fourteen each. The um, keyword aim. Aim. Yeah. Aim. Um, that leaves that leaves very little room for the rest of it because um, we're talking about what? Oh, uh, I can't do some math. Forty-two. Uh, plus forty-two. 30. Yeah. Forty-two out of a hundred. That's almost half the deck. Not now, including land. <laughs> not including land. So, um, land, we're aiming for about 34. That's pretty average. Um, unless if you are running extra ramp and you don't need the extra land, you could probably remove some. Um, you don't really want to drop too much from 34. Yeah, I don't. Because you're away. Yeah. The pain. You've seen me go seven games without drawing a single friggin' mana. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, and... you, you start splitting up your deck into... Um, you can almost look at it like thirds. Because um, 34... Uh, it's just, it's just over, yeah. Yeah, it's just over a third. Um, but with that, you're at 76 out of 100. So that leaves you 24 for unique. And that's basically your deck. What am I yeah. doing with this deck? That's, that's the not engines. Like, and we can preface <laughs> all of this with the fact that fourteen is not a hard rule. Like, you can, you can. Sure I just don't go under ten. Like, of, of any of those categories, if I go under ten, I'm hurting my own soul. So, right. uh, we we definitely want to stay in that between ten and fourteen. I know that I uh, I actually usually throttle back to like fourteen, twelve, twelve. Or 14, 12, 10. Um, but that just depends on how good the engines are. So, like, if the draw engines are really good, then obviously you don't need 14 of them if they're really good. So, I don't need 14 Phyrexian Arenas. <laughs> I don't need, you know, right. 14 Sensei's Divining Tops. You know? <laughs> like, no, yeah. For, for the draw party, you're just looking for stuff that can get you to that next thing to get you moving through your deck. Right. Keyword yeah. engines. Engines. Yeah. Um, well, we started pulling away from the uh, single draws, the double draws, uh, just card replacement, and moved, uh, moved way closer um, to just those draw engines. The stuff that's just going to constantly 
feed your hand from turn to turn. Right. Um, Sorry, I was having camera issues there for a sec. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a little fuzzy still, but whatever. No, it looks... Uh, I don't know. It looks fine. You look hands. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we uh, jump into one of the categories, because um, obviously land is land. Um, you know, like staple stuff like right. command tower, right. um, unless you're in a mono deck. Like, you don't really need the color correctables if, you, uh, if you're in one color, but how many people play one color all the time? Um... Which one do you want to start with? You want to go to draw, um, removal, or ramp? And then we'll just spout off yeah. a few staples and a couple of colors and then... Um, removal. Remove. Let's go with one of your favorites. <laughs> right. I mean, what color would you like to start with? Uh, white. Oh, gross. Uh, we're going to pass to uh, exile that response. Uh, generous gift. We're going to swords to plowshare. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if I'm running five colors... Those are the only white removals I'm getting other than Farewell. Yeah, so, Farewell you know, is a nasty board wipe. You're so, right, so we right. also left out board wipes, at least three of them. Because if you don't, you're going to suffer. Or right. at least in yeah, our it does, you're it suffer. does go in your removal. It does go in the removal. Yeah, part, yeah so. that's part of it. It's just a yeah, category that you one. want at least three of them. Yep. So um, in white, one of those board wipes would be Farewell, which gives you the option to exile one or more of creatures uh, i believe creatures enchantments artifacts and graveyards which is everything yes clean out everything <laughs> yeah, which oh, is basically get rid of everything that's ever been played is in play and everybody starts over with their current life total and land and what's, left in, what's left in their library and land dude yeah we try to say hey Hey, we stay away from land destruction. Yeah, we do no, not. We do not M M D or M G D or whatever mass M L D mass land destruction. Mass land destruction. Yeah, the um <laughs> weapons of mass land destruction. Dude, think about it though. Any any combat deck that has done its thing and is huge, and they're just on that waiting for that last turn to just kill you. Farewell. Yeah. They they lose. Not yeah. farewell sucks. Just let it run. <laughs> well, you better hope you don't, because you're gonna lose everything. Oh man, yeah that that'll clean up all your enchantments. Uh, and I'm an enchantment heavy type of person. I love those enchantments. Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> Turn seven, he's got fifteen of them. Ridiculous. <laughs> One right after another. Drew all... seven cards a turn because of an enchantment. <laughs> one per. Stupid. <laughs> No, it's actually very good. Your draw, your draw enchantments are on point. Um, the so the board wipes in white. There's obviously also board wipes in other colors. Thank God. Austere so, command I, is good, but it's a little specific. For me. I have to reread it, but I remember thinking I didn't like it for some reason. Blasphemous act. Everybody loves it. Blasphemous act is the best. In my spell slinger deck now, it. Uh, I have uh, repercussions, so all the damage done to the creatures. My Spellslingers has basically no creatures. So all the damage done to the creatures is done to the player. And I basically don't get any damage because the only one I'm going to have is my commander. I'll take one set of 13 and recur Blasphemous Act. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> uh, but he was talking about austere command in chat. Uh, choose two. You can destroy all oh. artifacts, enchantments, yep. creatures with converted mana cost three or less, or destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. Um, so I don't like the ones that have to do specific. Like the the cost of the card isn't well, so it's... much on farewell that you can't just go to farewell. Like it's it's similar. What's the CMC on farewell? I thought uh, it was six. Yeah, it is. And then the CMC on Austere is also sex, so why wouldn't you just get Farewell? It just has right. way better versatility. Although I mean, if you're, I mean if, if you're, if you're running Mono White, yeah, I'd probably put both in. Well, yeah, because you don't have a choice. What else are you going to put right. in there? Um, I don't know. Not off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah, I need at least two colors for most of the stuff that touches white. Um, a lot of them are Wraths. I think there's, no, there's a White Wrath that you can use um, too, but... I, I don't really mono white. If I was going to mono anything, it'd be green. <laughs> but, yeah. uh... Or blue. I don't know if you, I don't know if you could function. 
<laughs> Dude, I oh, hate playing <laughs> white, bro. I'm my, my commander deck is uh is Orzov for the competition we're doing, and man, that thing sucks. Well, it doesn't suck, but I'm mm-hmm. I'm just it was frustrating to build. Yeah. But um, so a couple more noteworthy uh board wipes Pretty besides cool. farewell and last mm-hmm. of the sack would be chain reaction. It's another one in red. Yep. Um, damnation in black. Nope, that's Orzov. Mm, damn is well okay the kicker no damn is orzov oh, no, damnation right. is black damn is or- orzov. yeah yeah, yeah damn is orzov because of the kicker right um and then there's also an orzov one path of peril so um all of which are destroy most of those are destroy so blasphemous act deals combat damage yeah comet storm and star storm although those are pumpers those are ones you got to put mana into um based on x um what else do we have Moving into green, maybe we got Beast Within. Everybody's favorite. Beast Within. Beast Within. This is like go. Uh, Croson yeah. Grip. Uh, what is it? Uh, bite down. Bite down. Yeah, make them fight. Especially if you have Death so, Touch. Yeah, and if you're running creature creature deck, that's I mean that's like your go-to right there. Yeah, uh, Croson's Grip or Croson's Grip, the one with uh, split second. Okay. Uh, Nature's Claim. Artifact and enchantment removal. Yep. Right? Yeah, both of them are. Return to Dust is another good white one. Yeah. Uh, from chat. Nice. The, Return to Dust. Yeah, Return to Dust. It's a, I think it's an enchantment artifact one as well. Uh, off the top of my head. Um, in blue, we have Pongify. Pongify is good. Um, I mean, in a rainbow deck, we've already said enough to build out the the removal part because you have you just have so many options. That yeah, basically all of that is powerful removal. And then obviously, I mean, it's not removal, but we normally, I mean, I put it in removal would be like uh, counter counter spell and um, negate. Right. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm like, yeah, and uh, you're building control. That's a whole nother. Easter egg of joy, yeah, because you allow you to, (laughs) yeah, basically, this is my world and you live in it. Um, (laughs) but uh, with your counter spells, negates offer you can't refuse one with death is good too, yes. Um, there's just a a wealth, yeah, what's that one? One with death, uh, go ahead and read it. You is the (laughs) case, that's funny. Good meme. <laughs> oh, that's nice. But uh, the amount of removal <laughs> that's available in this game. And you know what's crazy is a lot of people who play Commander don't run Interaction. They they play Solitaire. And I, it's just, I'm finding that more and more where people have, you know, five or six Interactions in their entire deck. And then they, they get bodied because they can't do anything. Actually, there's a there's a lot of people I don't even see run any sort of instant. Yeah, like, like the one guy it, who plays Chatterfang. <laughs> the the removal you can put you can build all fourteen removal and they all end up being sorcerers, but that's not what we're going for. <laughs> that, like we want re- removal, we want to clear the boards, but we want interaction during other people's turns. So make sure some of those are instances for sure. Oh yeah, well, uh, first Trey said past me as one of those people <laughs> past me yeah um, yeah because so basically the idea is to that interaction during other people's turns leaves your mana open for the stuff that you want to play during your turn and it protects your board state like if everybody's running removal and you're not you're just going to sit there and suffer true yeah. unless, unless if you're unless if you're holding to avoid being a target but then you're are you really even playing Right, like there's only you can, that only goes to a finite point, and then you have to just like you have to play and see where you go. You have to play something, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta get stuff on the board, otherwise, you know, wide open targets still get hit regardless. Yeah, dude, mana for turn for thirteen turns, repercussions turn fifteen, blasphemous act. I win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what a jerk! <laughs> what a uh, dick! Or the uh, the new infinite I have in goblins for uh, Squee. Um, yeah, and Aloran. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Goblin Bombardment Infinite. Yeah, Goblin Bombardment Squee and Aloran infinite damage. 
all pop on site, so. Yeah, well, unless you can pop the enchantment, there's really nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Right? And if you can't, if we can't interact during your turn, that it's just going to have to ride, and everybody, everybody's going to suffer or lose. Right, that's where Crozon's grip would come in handy, because it's split second, so nothing can go on the stack on top of it. So you right. pop Goblin Bombardment, and then you laugh a lot. <laughs> you and your fat cat friends. <laughs> you and your, you and your fat cat friends. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just there's so much removal available in this game, and a lot uh, yeah. of people just avoid it. And I'm like, come on, uh, nuke them. You gotta, you got, you can't just run, let people run wild. Um, yeah, especially but, the people we play with. <laughs> yeah, especially the people we play. With. But getting... to get there, you need to draw. You do. I guess we can move in to the draw phase because really it's just knowing, hey, I need this many board wipes and this many removal spells and don't be really? crazy and pick removal spells that you can like work around, you know, like they need to be as absolute as possible and they need to be as vague as possible so that they affect the most different types of cards. If you stick to that, you'll be fine. Permanence, uh, exile over destroy and permanent over anything else. Counter like, over everything. Control. Counter counter over everything hey draw doom. Um, draw draw doom draw to draw what is to draw that is the question <laughs> <laughs> so lame um oh, oh man. man so uh draw good draw cards uh one of my favorites Phyrexian arena yeah i knew that was gonna be your first one <laughs> dude i fell on that card and it, i'm sorry but in mardu it fits so well when you don't have much options for draw in red and white or the draw in red or in red and white is very specific red is normally um what, what's the term uh impulse draw impulse, yeah, draw. Yeah, impulse draw i don't like that i don't like i don't i don't want to not know what's going <laughs> i don't on. i don't want to it goes it goes a year not in my hand. Dude, Spellslingers is like the perfect example of every fucking staple because it's the one deck I can impulse draw and not feel bad about it unless you you exile my graveyard, in which case you would have fucked me anyway. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right, I mean, if, uh, that's I mean, that's the Spellslinger deck you run is is the ability to play out of your graveyard. Recursion. Recursion. Actually, you there's a spell. I do. There's a spell in my deck that allows me to kick it and play all the spells in my graveyard at once for free. <laughs> it's, <sighs> it's fucking broken. It kind of sucks for the ones you have to pump because you don't get to pump them, but whatever. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, a st it's still a spell. It doesn't exile anything, though, so it puts it back in the graveyard to where I can recur them individually. <laughs> Throw it out there. Yeah. Uh, I guess my draw would be, like, Garouks. Those are tr like uh, those are triggered. So like, yeah. I play something for a greater power. Not only does it get trampled, but I draw a card. You know, right? That's that's a that's definitely a twofer. Although it does not fit in token like smaller token decks because you're not going to net any draw, which is going to make you hate your life. No, so uh, fecundity. So, uh, small. Uh, token or small creature token decks would uh, I would do um, welcoming vampire. Yeah, yeah. Like we covered that we covered that one in our our uh, last video. Yeah, Was drawing in white. Video? Yeah, drawing in white. Um, I I personally love uh, Zendikar Resurgence. Mm. No, that is a good one. Honestly, I saw you did it to me like forty times before. I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he's like, yeah. give me more mana, and I'm gonna draw cards. <laughs> That was dog shit. Double mana. Gotta love it. I, uh, uh, I, like... I, I... Go, Go ahead. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> uh, I love... I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the... Uh, um, I love the two first. I like the ones that can do two. more than one thing. But, um, yeah, I mean... Unless... But normally you have a higher cost for that. So... It's gonna cost more mana to get it out, and you could waste an entire turn just getting it out for it to get popped. Yeah, this so is it's, true. Yeah, it's I kind of uh, hit or miss. I uh, like I know that everybody's not as big of a fan of it as I am, but in token decks and sacrifice decks and things like that, 
Fecundity runs, dude. Like, death triggered draw is it's good in some decks. It's just, it just depends on what deck you're running it in. Obviously, in a, in a creature, uh, a big swing, big stick deck, you don't want all your shit to die. So it's not going to be, you're going to be better spent putting a board protection like Deferi's or something in your deck as opposed to trying to draw off creature death because hopefully they don't die. But right. um, my, uh, like the deck I'm working on right now, that sacrifice deck, that would net mad gain. The only thing is it also lets the other people draw. So you have to be careful of how you utilize that card. So it's definitely a little higher IQ than I would say like a, Garuk's Uprising or a Tamura Ascendancy or you know, yeah, anything you like could, that. You gotta be careful with giving giving other people draw, um, especially off of something that has uh that especially like that where it's on death and it's any creature and it's any player. <laughs> any player. So if they have a uh infinite sacrifice engine out and you just gave them the ability to now draw through the entire their entire deck as well. So yeah, that's definitely definitely something to consider before you immediately just throw that out there, or have the ability to remove your own enchantment in case you see something like that. Again, we're back to that removal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, it's ca cash is king, buddy. I, uh, I mean, the, you can have the best enchantments in the world, but if you don't, actually, there's one enchantment that counters stuff on automatically. But uh, we don't we don't run that we don't run that garbage. Uh, the you can have, uh, control decks. Uh. I mean, I like control decks. That's just a bit much. Uh, <laughs> the the enchantments are there, but if I'm popping them, they're not netting you anything. So it's it's important to have a really good balance between the three categories. Because right now we're just talking about the engines. We're not talking about unique or land because land is self explanatory for the most part and the unique we don't know what deck we're building right now all we know is we're building engines which i usually like to pick the commander before i put the engines together one because i need to know what colors are available to me and two just because there are some things that only work in certain decks like fecundity that only fits in decks where stuff is dying a lot um yeah and it, uh, it, has to be, it has to be i believe fecundity if i remember correctly it has actually has to be on your turn has to be a or no a creature that you control, correct? Yeah, yeah. Anyone, anyone who has a creature dies draws. Um, and chat brought up Cathar's Crusade, which is it's a unique card. Not it doesn't fall in any of these categories, but it is a very good card. Cathar, yes. So Cathar's Crusade is actually not a draw engine. Though. No, no, he's it's a unique card. He just brought it up in chat, and oh, I didn't want to ignore. Unique. Him. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Cathar's is an amazing, uh, creature heavy deck. Anytime. Let's just say you have an a infinite token uh, um, engine. So you got an infinite token engine. You got Cathars out there. Now you have infinite token plus infinite power. Because every time one of those creatures is coming up, all your creatures are getting plus one. So that can get out of hand very, very fast. Cathars is one of my favorite cards, actually. Honestly, I, I, I agree, too. I... Uh... I don't have a copy of it right now, actually, because I think I traded it, which sucks because I don't, well, I don't have my green white Karametra deck anymore. So right. that's what it right. was in for exactly what you're talking about. Token generation. Um, yeah. But I mean, you've also pulled away from the um, the big stick whack you in the face. Yeah, I've got Jota. My Jota deck is dope. Like if I want to play big stick, I can. Um, and I have Cascade right. twice. And jo and Joda honestly doesn't need Cathars because he's built in he, Cathars. He gives everything XX anyway. Yeah. yeah the, so you're good. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah. My Joda deck slaps. If I wanted to spend like fifty bucks on it, that thing would be nasty. OP. Yeah. OP sir. But, that's uh, why man, you get so frustrated and everybody just pops Joda on sight. You summon up. Well, that's why I put a bunch of protection the in there now. Yeah. Back it's, to the it plays a little slower because I have to protect Jota and I have to play him last. Like I don't think I'm gonna win next turn. Here's Jota. Um nope. but back to the draws. Uh Mystic Remora yeah. is a fun one, although it has cumulative upkeep. So you better be ready uh, to pay for that. But they have to pay four for you not to draw, so you're pretty much drawing every time. Um so even if it only gets one full rotation, there's no way that everybody's not playing at least one spell. 
that's that's cards. That's a lot of cards, even if you let it drop off after one. So, yeah. not, and if someone is crazy enough to tap four to stop you from drawing, right. then you really cucked their turn. Right. So, but... Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, that, that card gets a lot of hate, but then again, I'm pretty sure yeah. almost every top player uses it. Well, yeah, dude, chat just said Ristic Study. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we don't speak uh, of those cards here. Yeah, Ristic Actually, I have no problem with it. We were just having a conversation no. today. Yeah. Like, if you, these are staple cards. Like, I don't care if anybody likes or doesn't like them. If you want to play Ristic Study, Mana Crypt, yeah. Smothering Tithe, play it. Who fucking cares? Just be honest about what you're playing, yeah. so I can play yeah. something proportional. Right. So don't say if you're basically if you're running Mystic Remora and uh, Ristic Study and um, all those upper level cards that you know like you know, 60, you know, up to a Mana Crypt, you know, what, a 180, $180 card. If you're playing those, it's not a mid. Don't call it a mid. It's not a pre-con <laughs> either. Not an upgraded not pre-con. pre-con. No, it's it's a upper tier. It's a higher level deck. Um, whether you know how to play it or not, if you're playing those cards, they can play themselves. You don't need to be a high level player or a high I or have a high IQ deck to play those cards. They can play themselves. Um, but if you have those in there, it's it's an upper level deck. Right. It, you know, it don't might be- not be a nine all the time, but you know, an easy easy seven and above, I would I would say. Well, yeah, because half of the animosity that happens is in games is people not talking about what their deck actually is oh this is you know how many times i hear this is a seven and it's definitely not a seven and then i have to sit there for a game getting bodied and then when the game is over i'm like okay i'm gonna play something stronger and then they switch to their shitter deck so they don't have to play their good one into my good one i'm like are you shitting me right now (laughs) (laughs) you didn't want to catch these hands Hmm. Hmm. a little little afraid Hmm. (laughs) But yeah, uh, yeah. The, as far as draw engines, the game is chock full of them. You can throw a rock and hit an enchantment that'll let you draw. And then, like you were talking about before, in red, you have impulse draw. So if you're okay with exiling cards and playing from exile, it's super useful. My entire uh, goblin deck and my entire, uh, which is gruel, and my entire spell slinger oh, deck here. both run off of impulse draw. There's almost none in the way of actual draw spells. I'm exiling one card, two card, three card, and I'm playing those cards from exile until my turn or my next turn. And it it works. You just have to use them at the proper time to know that those cards will get utilized and not go into the, not even the bin, they go to exile. So you you just have to be careful and be thinking a couple of steps ahead when you're doing it. Right, so in in red, there's a lot of uh, combat draws. So if it deals damage to opponent, um, or player, that combat damage triggers a draw. You know that draw steps happening after your combat phase. So you're looking at leaving mana up during your combat phase, so you can play in main phase two instead of playing in main phase one all the time. So obviously, depending on the deck you're playing, but that's just another example that you you know just need to pay attention to what type of draw you're playing. Right, and and just be aware. Um, chat made a good point. Like our third member, Hector, uh, he runs a very good amount of red of red decks, and all of them impulse draw almost perfectly. Uh, uh, the dude is a whiz at impulse drawing because he'll flip four cards and have them till next turn, and those four cards will be the end of the game for you. So, <laughs> so uh, impulse draw is very powerful and very underrated. Um, yeah. it's just it's like it takes management. You have to pay attention. Right. Yeah, you ha- you either have to, basically you have to leave mana open for the possibility, but you have to ramp first properly, make sure you have the mana for impulse draw. Oh, balance. So that's, yeah, oh, balance. Um, that's another thing that he's really good at, is making sure that he has enough mana in any color on the field. I don't understand how he does it. The only Obviously. decks that I've ever seen a modicum of struggle is Rakdos. And to be fair, those are the hardest ones to bring mana to the field because even white has like if a player has more mana than you, search your library for three three planes, <laughs> or whatever, or like the stupid yeah. dog that lets you get a yep. go fetch. Like it has stuff, 
Whereas black and red, dude, like if you're not impulsing into mana that you can then play or, yeah. you know, yeah. cascading into it with Avernus if it's a multicolored deck or like, God, there's, or Averna, there's like, God, it's so painful. The ramp is the hardest part in those colors. There's, yeah, it's very little, um, if any at all. But I think uh, probably a good stopping point for this week because we don't want to go too far into um, everything. Um, when we come back in for part two, we'll probably brush back over the ones we've talked about. We'll hopefully have Hector back, and uh, I know that he's got a, a vault of cards in his mind to, you know, 47 ramp, 47 removal, 47 drop. But just remember to stick to those those numbers loosely and to try to be as efficient as possible like don't don't waste a card you know drawing a, one card after you know playing paying a spell to draw one card just replaces itself it doesn't actually net you anything it took me a while to get into the like the the draw was the hardest part for me yeah the draw was the hardest part for me and the the fact that well i'm drawing a card it doesn't mean anything if you paid a card to draw a card yeah, you know, so just yeah. Yeah, efficiency. So, um, yeah, and so we'll cover cover some more next week, and we'll balance. We'll work on that balancing. Um, you know, next time in part two. Yeah, maybe we pull up a scryfall and throw some some stuff up on the screen. We'll uh, pick an easy commander to build on or something. You know, yeah, like an an, like Animar. <laughs> Not like we both don't have one. Well, protection against black and white. Or I, hate, I hate that card so much. <laughs> protection against half my decks. <laughs> half my decks. black. I have a lot of black. <laughs> you and your fat, you and your fat cat friends. Anyway, I oh, will man. see you guys in the next one, I guess. Take care.